Hello. Hi, Indrik. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Very good. Nice to have you uh, join me. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. No problem. How's your day going? Oh, it's good. Yeah, I, I had a call with some Japanese companies, so I was switching between here and there. So. <laughs> the life That's of a cool entrepreneur. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Hey, Indrik, let's just dive straight into it, and um, yeah, just want to welcome you to to the Startup Chat chat podcasts um really really uh, appreciate it thank you so much for coming to join me um really excited to sort of learn more about your story and um and you know how you got to where you are and uh, and obviously a bit more about your business uh, which is alpha blues do you want to sort of uh um well, well before we dive into alpha blues um and i'll just give a quick overview alpha blues as i understand is a ai chats sort of messaging tool for uh, corporations would that be a, a fair statement yeah that's a fair statement so uh we build conversational ai but you know in simple terms we build chatbots for the enterprise fantastic fantastic um well listen let's dive into it um how did you um get to where you get, you know where you are now what made you get into this business um we did something similar before or uh, is this um something new um, I think you've been doing it for a few years now, haven't you? Yeah, so this company is uh, three and a half years old. Um, and uh, my story started, um, so I, I did my undergraduate degree and it was non-technical. I did it in, in government. I, I studied at, at Harvard in the States. And then I came back to Estonia because, you know, I'm from Tallinn, Estonia. Um, and so I was raised and born here. And after, after States, I moved back to Estonia because it was a way to get, you know, good, you know, hands, hands-on experience in, in business. And I consulted a, a few startups and then I was uh, hired as a CEO of, uh, of a data science company. Now it's called machine learning. Back then it was big data, right? So, you know, yeah. terms changed, but the idea is the same kind of. And, and I was the CEO of that company and it was really exciting because, you know, I had essentially, you know, two things I had to do. I had to ma manage budgets and, uh, and then people. Um, and so I got acquainted to a lot of things happening in, in machine learning and like cybersecurity and, and all those things. And I got really excited about tech. And so after a while at that, I said, you know, hey, uh, I want to start my own company. Uh, and then. So, Andrew, just to sort of dive in there just briefly. So this was your first um, entry into the world of tech. Yeah, so my first entry uh, before that, I started writing business plans for startups because they wanted to raise money and you know investors asked for business plans. So I had good command of English and I could write the compelling story. So they said, hey, you know, why don't you write us a business plan? So I wrote some and they raised some money. Um, uh, uh, but then, then, you know, then I started because the tech scene started, you know, getting more popular here in Estonia at least. Uh, and I started getting more excited about it. And, you know, once I had this executive lore, role then i was you know i had a deep dive into like my real life mba in in the tech world almost um the perfect place to uh you know to cut your teeth through isn't it yeah i mean it was uh you know uh i had no idea what i was gonna do when i went into it i just did it uh and it was exciting so what i had i had you know uh, we grew into seven, 70 employees i uh, was the only management board member i had 12 supervisory board members plus it was partly funded by the government so it was like a matrix of complexity and you know so you had to hire people fire people uh, run the company uh, do all that which is you know very much you know what you you learn on the job yeah. there's no real program that can <clears throat> you know help you for that to do it when you have to so even half it can't help there I, I think it, it can give you a good understanding, <laughs> but ultimately you learn by doing so. Yeah. Absolutely. I could agree more. I can agree more. So, um, so when you're um, doing that business, you, you um, what was the, the light bulb moment that you thought I want to do this myself? Um, so I, I started thinking about doing something for myself for, for a while uh, because I had, you know, various ideas. Um, but I said, you know, I need to, I need to get some experience to see how things are run. And then at the time when I was at the company, I got approached by a really uh, smart guy uh, named Hendrik, who is now the CTO, where he's a co-founder at Alpha Blues. And so he he approached me with an idea, and you know he had a background in neuroscience, as a PhD there, uh, and he had an idea. I said it's interesting, uh, let's think about it. And then uh, after a while, I said you know let's just do it. Uh, and that was, of all things, it was related to genetic data analysis. 
Uh, so it was like super science heavy. It was like as far from social media as you can get. And, uh, <laughs> and so, so we started doing that. Um, and, uh, and we did that, uh, you know, we built the product, but we didn't manage to, you know, scale it to the level we wanted. And then we, we pivoted. So, you know, I, I think the story from where I was to now, we've come through about three or four pivots. And it's all been about, you know, looking at, you know, having a sense of like inner thing, like you want to do something, but then being very realistic about, you know, how are things going? Does it make sense? You know, is, is the product taking off or not? Because you sort of have a feel for it. Um, and mm -hmm. then we switched more to um, image analysis because we are interested always in machine learning and data. Like, how can you make sense of it? Um, and then we went from, from image analysis and then through sort of looking at like e-commerce based solutions, we, we sort of not stumbled, but found our way into chat automation and chatbots for four years ago. And, and now we have been in that space uh, ever since. Brilliant. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's really interesting actually how, you know, the, the broad scope was the same in terms of data. Um, I wanted to do something within that data world um, and how, you know, you obviously had to pivot and look at, you know, if the market wasn't quite right for it, had to sort of just tweak it and look at, look at going in a different direction. When, when you were looking and um, when you were launching those businesses, were you, um, was there sort of mistakes that you made in those early days that helped, helped you now? Um, did you do, for example, enough sort of pre-launch marketing strategy around sort of, you know, is there an audience out there to actually warrant the product or was it uh, harder to do with, because of the nuances within the, what you were trying to do? Yeah, I think we've made all the mistakes. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, 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 I think we made them all, but, but I think that the main one was sort of uh, like, you get so excited, like if you're an entrepreneur, you get so excited about some things. And you just want to do it. You're like, oh my God, this is like the greatest thing ever. And let's just build it. And, and one of the things I think the, the, the first uh, thing we did is, you know, we, we, we saw that it was a great thing and, and, and we started building it right away. Uh, whereas in turn, you know, it's called this classical customer development and sort of the, the lean startup and all that, uh, which, you know, talk to your customers, figure out what they want. You know, will somebody want it enough that they'll pay for it? Uh, because it's easier to ask people than to build a product and then ask them, right? So mm. in hindsight, it's obvious once we were doing it, we we're like, oh my God, this is exciting. Let's do it. It's, it's going to change so much. Um, so I think that's was, that was one of the main things uh, that we picked up on is that you can have a lot of enthusiasm and you need to have it, but also you need to, you know, you, you cannot do it all and you have to be very specific of how you apply your energy and time and sort of find like the quickest route to sort of getting some kind of validation from the market about your solution. Um, that was like one of the main, the main things to learn. No, that's fantastic. I think, I think, you know, you're certainly not alone because there's so many startups who, who have exactly that, that passion, that drive, that energy, that they, they, they're convinced that they're going to change a, a sector and industry that they can see problems with. Um, and too often, you know, they're not actually speaking to that sector you know, to actually identify is that a problem that they see. You might see it, but they might not, and they're the important ones ultimately. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, I think this is you know as as a you know first time startup founder, then that clearly was like you know the the trap we walked into. But you know, uh, other than that, uh, what we learned from it is that actually we can build products really quickly. Uh, so, you know, you build it the first time, but then once the second time comes around, you already know what you want to do. And then, you know, you sort of, you have more of the sense, okay, now I'm talking to customers, I'm showing them prototypes, visions, I'm just drawing things on a napkin, asking, you know, because you want to do all that before a developer starts to code, because when they start to code, things become expensive in terms of time and money, right? So you, you want to do things on, on paper and pen uh, before that. So, so when we now look at the uh, the latest business, Alpha Blues, um, what was that uh, sort of, I guess, um, pre-launch phase that you went through that we're sort of talking about? That um, you know, you obviously went through a validation phase. Um, you started hearing that that was an issue. You know, there was an, a need and a demand. I'm guessing within that, uh, yeah. you know, within online, I guess, communications, um, and presumably you sort of spoke to. Your, you know, your audience and, uh, and got that validation and, and, and all the rest of it. 
what was the do you have a pre sort of launch strategy or was that just a case of just building those connections with the right audiences that you wanted to target or uh, was it around sort of branding we um because i am i right thinking you're not you're not you're not targeting the general consumer you're targeting more of the the corporate world yeah so we are business to business so we work with enterprise we're not b2c right um so I want to say that we had a strategy in place, but I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd be lying. It was more about so. But the honesty is always the it. best. Honesty is always <laughs> the best. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, talking BS. There's no point. People, people will know right away. Uh, but, but uh, what we had is so we had a product that at, at the time we we wanted to um, with the image analysis part. We said, you know, it, it was meant for online shopping. So how do you discover products? And our thinking was, well, with images, like let's say, you know, women want to shop for handbags, they click on a, on a red, you know, red handbag and they found, you know, the, the algorithms will find them similar shaped and colored handbags, right? And so we started with that and we actually had a, an a early customer uh, who, you know, we were grateful to work with and they, uh, we deployed it to Facebook Messenger. Um, and interesting enough, that was the time when Facebook opened up the Messenger API for, for chatbots and sort of the first wave of chatbots came, I think 2000 and or whatever it was, 16 or 17. Um, and then, then we built that, but we saw that, you know, the product discovery part was okay, but then the chat part was, was more relevant to a larger audience of companies because, you know, the product discovery in e-commerce, you know, you need certain type of companies of size and, and the market needs to be big and all that. Um, so we said, hey, but, you know, this chat automation is really cool because, you know, communication between brands and customers is, you know, basically for any brand. Mm -hmm. And so from there, we, we, we started first building the AI solution, the platform to build bots, right? So how do you build it? How do you train them? Make sure that they understand, you know, any, any language. Um, and we focused on that. And interestingly, you know, we first thought that, you know, chat has been solved, like the live chat part where you chat with human agents. And we just focused on the chatbot side of creating the bots and integrated with third-party platforms, you know, like you think of, you know, Zendesk or Intercom or those guys. But then what we realized is that the customers gave us feedback. And so we started working with, with, with banks and telecom companies, so large enterprises. Um, and then- So this is, we, this is before launch? This is before launch? You no, this is already when we had launched. This is already when we had launched. Um, and so, uh, because we didn't have this sort of, you know, great grand opening party mm -hmm. that now it's like December 4th and yeah. come, we have a solution, right? It wasn't like that. It was it developed through time. Well, I think ultimately, you know, pre-launch strategy is also about talking to your audience um, as much as branding and, and lots and lots of other things and whether you have a big party. Um, but actually talking to your audience is part of that whole pre-launch strategy to make sure your product's on point. So I think the fact that you are communicating, you know, directly, um, it's clearly, yeah. it's good. And again, the reason I touch on some pre-launch is because, you know, with this, um, with the podcast at the moment, we're really trying to focus um, and help, I guess, help people who are thinking about launching their businesses, you know, what are the mistakes that founders have done and, and maybe what lessons and things to think about. Um, so the fact that, yeah, you're communicating with that audience and you realise that was the right audience and not the yep. consumer market, which was probably a lot smaller, I'm guessing, although bigger, but maybe lower price yeah. point. No, okay, yeah. So if you're actually B two B or B two C, uh, so we never thought about going to B two C because ultimately in B two C. What you're doing is you started building up your brand and then you have to have a marketing budgets and attracting ultimately you know we saw that there are the customers already are with brands so we rather help brands bring them so our you know what we want to do is bring brands to the era of messaging right um so that's why we started targeting the brands but you know early days and and still as of now we work very tightly like our developers work very tightly with the brands with the product man managers and, and the customer you know service manager at brands because these are the people, you know, we see, you know, what features they want, what's their needs, how they like the product. They are the ones who are, you know, using the product. And from there, we have learned sort of the thing I was talking about earlier, that when we focus entirely on chatbot building platform first, then there was a need that, you know, we actually need live chat that can attach and bring the intelligence of the bot into the live chat. Because before it was sort of the bot did intelligence and work and then we threw it into like a black hole of existing live chat systems and the intelligence didn't transfer um and then we said you know i guess we need to build our own live chat system and we did so within a year we, we built it from scratch uh, and and now what we offer is the bot and the chat together as, as, 
as one product. Amazing, amazing. And um, do you constantly work very closely with the, the businesses that you that, that your clients to evolve it and, and I guess iterate to the, the nuances? Uh, so you mean the nuances between the between the customers? Yeah, and the, and the products. Ah, okay. Uh, so I would say, yeah, main focus is is, is finance and, and 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 telecoms. I'd say uh, ballpark. You know, the questions that the uh, people ask the bot in finance or telecoms. In telecoms, it's the same. They ask the standard set of questions. In banking, it's the same, right? So. You know, telecoms is all about billing and invoices. In in banks, it's all about you know credit cards and and loans. Um, so that's the same. But I would say that you know each brand is still different. Like uh, you know, even though the telecoms are offering a similar service, their you know positioning is different, or the language that they mm. communicate is different, mm. and the product. Tone of voice, still, I guess, as well. Yeah, they, they they are still a bit different. So each has their their own own nuances. So ultimately, like a bot for. A well done bot for a company is is still, you know, it's it's a bit tailor made. It's not like off the shelf and here you go, uh, because each brand you know has a unique way they interact and products offer. That's really interesting actually, because I think um, the way things are starting to move and the shift is towards um, really tailoring the experience to the customer um, online. So I guess you know if you're uh, I don't know a, a NatWest customer or uh, I don't know a, another bank. Um, you'll you'll have a certain expectation of, and of, of how they communicate with you, whereas maybe if you back with HSBC, again, it might be different. So that tailored service and that you know that tailored output effectively is is I think going to be appealing for lots more businesses as we sort of progress. Um, I think that tailoring can go to lots of many different levels across lots of different industries. So just the fact that you can like on Facebook, I think you can change the uh, the background color of your you know your page from i think i've done from black to white or something like, like that so it's just you know you make it more your own and i guess you're working with those businesses to t tailor their comms um rather than just buy a standardized piece of software yeah yeah and so and and that's the thing uh, because uh you know that's the thing we realized that ideally you would want to have it as a packaged product but you're selling to enterprise and nothing sold to enterprise is really like 100% off the shelf. It always has a level of customization. Now, the key is, as a, as a business, as, a, as we are, you know, how do you grow? Because you know, we, our aim is not to become, we're not a chatbot consultancy that we build a project and the project and the project. So with the two products, the Alpha AI for building chatbots and Alpha Chat for live chat, uh, what we have done is productize as much as possible so that maybe the customization is only like 10% of the whole thing. And, and as the product now has matured over the past few years, you know, we give more and more power for the customers. So let's say we take a bank, then you know, what, they what the setup will be is that we set up the accounts for them, but then there's a project manager and, and they can build the bot, they can edit the answers, they can train the bot if they want, right? They can make all the connections with the agent. And what we've now done is also, which has been again market demand is that we built uh, a thing called Alpha OS, so our own operating system, which is essentially means that the developers at the bank they can now program on our platform on their own personalized connections with their databases, because you know you don't want just the bot to say that you know you are an anonymized user and I'll give you a standard answer. I want to say hey you know you're indirect, uh, your balance is X amount of euros, right? Now, how do you do that? Well, now we give the bank's developers the tools so that they can build it in themselves versus us doing it as like a service. And that has been sort of the driving focus. What we have now seen over the past year, year and a half is really enabling the customers to do more on their own on our platform. Uh, and this is, you know, something that I'm really, really super excited about What's we've been rolling out things for the past few months. Right, fantastic. So, Indrik, if we just roll it back um, to when when you started this, um, how did you uh, get your first uh, customer? Um, I don't know if you can say who your first customer was. Um, how did you make that first connection? What was that first, I guess, moment that you thought, ah, you know, that's our first one. We've made it. We can do this. It's, there's, there's, there's a market for it. Yeah, I know the first customer. Yeah, I remember it's, it was a, it's a company in the finance field and. Well, it came through personal connections. So there was a uh, there was a networking event. I, you know, I went to talk to people. I said, "Hey, what you're doing?" I said, "We're doing this now." 
at the time. So we were working on the more the e-commerce side. So we had the cust customers there, but the full chatbot thing. And then I got uh, introduced to, to the company and they were like, okay, great. Like, you know, we're growing. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of users. Uh, we you know our customer support cannot give up. Let's do it. And then, you know, from there on, you know, we said, you know, we have this platform, you know, why don't you give it a try? We signed them up and, and it was cool. It was like, wow, like we have a customer and they're paying us money and oh my God, it's everything is awesome. Right. So <laughs> it was, it was, it was like one of those, uh, one of those, and it was, it was awesome. And, and they're still a customer us to, to this day. So it's, it's, it's been a very exciting journey with them, but I think ultimately what what you need is those things you you cannot plan they are like serendipity or they just happen through networks and you know like startup is so much about randomness it's it's insane it drives you insane sometimes but you have to stay stay cool headed with it so definitely uh, so so one of those things that just happened and and then but I think in the beginning like what you need is from the customer side somebody who who takes the leap of faith because you know you're not IBM, you're not like some, some, you're not Google, you're some guys, like we were actually almost, we were working literally next to a garage in our office. And so, you know, it's like, how, like, why should I work with you? But, you know, if they take a chance on you, then you grow with that. So you need those really early, um, early adopters, early customers. Um, and, and, and that, but that's how you get started in any business. No, definitely, definitely. And I think that that point when you, um, you touched on with luck, I think uh, I think I saw a TED talk about luck being a, an incredible factor, incredibly high percentage factor of whether a startup will succeed or not. Um, and obviously, there's a lot more factors. And I'll try to find the um, uh, the TED talk and put a link on uh, on the podcast. But um, it's uh, yeah, it's it's incredibly strange world i think sometimes sometimes our, our world can take us down certain paths and i would say luck but it's i think mostly it's 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 timing and you know one, one thing that i've you know learned a lot of things but it's you have you have to keep an open mind um because there are so many things that i thought were true and sort of dogmas that i've thrown down the trash bin and said these don't work and if you have the ability that you can do that that's amazing uh, if, if you still get stuck with dogmas and sort of are, are difficult to switch your mind, uh, then, then, then it's difficult. Of course, you know, you cannot be all over the place all the time. You need to have a vision and, and the direction, but, but just sort of, uh, you, you don't know what's going to work, right? Like, like who knew that like, you know, eight months ago that Zoom would, everybody would know Zoom. I think 10 months mm -hmm. ago, nobody really knew what it was. Now it's like the like same word as Google, right? So. So it's, it's one of those things that things change uh, super rapidly and you have to just be, be open to it and, um, and yeah, have, have an open mind. No, definitely. And when you had that first customer, did you have a clear idea um, in terms of your pricing structure? Or again, was that a little bit trying to figure it out on the fly, um, seeing what you could, you know, you know trying to, I, I guess, test the market, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Again, I should say, yeah, we had we had a huge spreadsheet, and a lot of management. It's like, what can, what can we get away with? <laughs> Who put together the pricing? Uh, uh, it was it was more about you know you, you see okay I'm gonna price it at X because I think you know the value it brings is Y, and similar solutions on the market are priced Z, right? So I think that makes sense. Uh, but of course, you know you you say the price, and then the customer says okay or like nobody says, I want to pay more. <laughs> I, want, I want a discount. And so, so you know, that's how you, that's how you start. And of course, I mean, with bots, it's, um, I think still to this day, the pricing is, there's no sort of set pricing because it's a very, it's like a cost, like somebody builds you a custom sports car. Like what does it cost? You know, as much as a car on the street, not really, but it doesn't also as cost as much as a rocket ship. Right. So, you know, you, you have to have some kind of uh, some, some kind of a logic behind it uh, but yeah the, I think the pricing has evolved uh, according to the, the the value it provides and, and the features that come with it right of course so the more things you can do on your own you know the less consulting it is from us so the, the better the, the, the more complete the, the product is and, um, and what's your strategy now in terms of acquiring new new customers um, do you sort of use the same sort of strategy you did before? Maybe networking, leveraging existing contacts, showcasing people oh. you work with now? Yeah. So what we have now is uh, we know who our target, uh, let's say, buyer personas are uh, within the sectors we're targeting. So it's mostly, let's say, 
mostly high growth startups, fintechs, banks, and, and telecoms. Uh, it could be other industries as well, but you know we, we keep that focus now. We have our geographic focus. Uh, and then you know we target the personas through you know various campaigns. Uh, of course, we have our then we have our own uh, network through which you know reference sales and, and, and those things. Uh, and then of course we have distributors in certain uh, we uh, in certain parts of the world uh, who already you know the thinking is because in enterprise the customers you want are already customers of some large IT integrator or, or reseller or IT company. So, you know, we target those companies and then they present our solution to their own customers, um, which, you know, makes make sense on a, on, a, on a lot of different ways. So do you have to have a big sales team to, to do a lot of that or, or uh, do you rely on some uh, in, um, no, inbound it's, it's, marketing? Yeah, it's mostly so we've been uh, we've been doing a lot of content marketing, uh, our blog on the whole topic of you know if you go to applebooks.com slash blog, conversational AI we provide a lot of information we've learned. So the key is that you know if you're a business and building a chatbot, don't mistake don't make those mistakes because we've made them. Just learn from that. So we provide that. We do now webinars, videos are free on our YouTube channel. You can just watch. So very let's say narrow niche targeted content for professionals. And through that, we've garnered inbound interest, uh, and you know we work from there. Uh, as as a company, you know we don't have um, we're bootstrapped, by the way. So we, as a startup, we haven't raised any outside financing. So uh, nice. uh, we um, uh, we have grown organically. Uh, of course, you know it's those things that you know you never say never. But <clears throat> as of now, um, uh, as of now, we're we're growing the way we're growing, and uh, and and there's sort of a, there's sort of a, a good um i would say there's, there's good freedom in owning your company and and having it run profitably uh and then of course you know look at the ways how you can scale and, and that's what we'd like to do with those uh partners and, and distributors uh to achieve those you know customers uh, across the globe uh, absolutely it's, it's leveraging the marketing to uh to reach the right audience isn't it yeah absolutely definitely and what so um let's um wrap it up but before we do um if you just talk, i need to know what the, the next steps are for your business and, and where where the future for it yeah so next steps for us is uh you know obviously expanding our customer base uh but we have some very exciting things coming out with a product in in about two months time before the end of the year uh where you know the the aim is that to build uh, allow companies to have like a really premier conversational AI chatbot platform where they can do a lot of things on their own and you know across different languages and, and domains. Um, so sort of the whole enabling the enterprise customers to do things on their own is something that we're always 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 geared for. Uh, and we have some exciting things uh, coming coming up in, in that direction. Oh, amazing. So you'll be able to have conversations from people in China, people in the US, people in India, yeah. Yeah. all that sort of thing. Fantastic. That uh, sounds very, very good. Brilliant. Well, listen, uh, Indrik, thank you so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate your time. Um, I'm sure you've got um, a lot more Zoom meetings and the rest <laughs> of it to, to crack on with. Um, but um, yeah, no, definitely let's keep in touch. And um, yeah, I wish you all the best um, with everything. And I'll be sure to keep an eye on, on your business. And um, yeah, th thanks again. So anyone who's listening, please um, yeah, check out Alpha Blues. Um, yeah, really, really interesting to sort of uh, learn more about them. And um, I'm sure if you've got any questions, um, you can reach out to Indrit on, uh, on LinkedIn and all the usual social channels, I'm sure. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having me. No worries. Well, take care. Bye.